just right here. Can yeah. we try it out before we... Uh, Actually, yeah. somebody has said that before. Yeah. I'm not surprised. <laughs> yeah, I, I have all <laughs> sorts of stories. You, you learn everything selling mattresses. There is nothing. In fact, one of my very first exposures to polyamory before I even knew what it was, was two young people came in asking for a bed built for five. Aww. Wait, a bed built for five? Right. That, they that's... wanted five people to fit. Okay, we have problems fitting four in our king. Right. And so that's why we got wall bed. Mm-hmm. And this was actually quite easy to solve, you see, because I asked who the tallest person was. Oh, and so California king and the, spin it sideways? The tallest person was shorter than me and would easily fit sideways on a California king. So, so four Cal- feet tall. Dun, dun, dun. California king turned sideways and they all fit. Yeah, well, when you're selling mattresses, people have to be personal. There was one woman who uh, was complaining that her bed hurt her knees. <laughs> uh, why would she need oh. to? Wait, I don't, I don't, I don't get it. If... You wouldn't. Moving on. <laughs> anyway, well, so I was talking to this customer, and she literally looked right at me. And said, "How long have you been married?" And I told her, and she said, okay, and I, it had been at the time, I think about five or six years, and she said, now watch out for that seven-year itch. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it was, so this is something that, is that people expect. Itch? You get to be married for seven for years before one of you cheats. And it's so, it's so common. It was, it's expected. We have a word for it. You remember uh, there, was a, uh, there was a movie a while ago. I can't remember who was in it. It was called Broken Arrow. Oh, that was um, John Travolta. Yeah, John Travolta was in it. One of the things they brought up, the movie is about losing a nuclear weapon, and it was called a broken arrow. That was the code word for it. And the guy, one of the characters expressed how disheartening it was that not only could this happen, but that happened so often that there was a name for it. Not only does cheating happen, but it happens so amazingly often that there's a word for it. There's a right. term. <laughs> the seven-year itch. We have the well, and that's the wa- thing. A roving eye. Well, that's the thing that like it's accepted. But when you have multiple people in a relationship, in a committed relationship or non-committed relationship, if you have an open polycule, you are all on the same page. Yeah. That's bad. But going behind each other's back is okay. Well, it's well, okay as long as nobody talks about it. Well, right. no, they would actually rather introduce you to their affair people than they would to their <laughs> equally loving and accepted partners. Right, and you see, and that's that's better some way. And um, a slight secret: Jay has busted somebody by accident when she used to work at a hotel. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. I learned like, oh. what not to say so to you, a repeat guest at it, a hotel. Yeah, if you're new at working at hotels and a front desk, yeah. and you say "Welcome back," oh, and they're "Welcome back, Mister So and So." It's good to see you again. And the person on his arm is looks at him and says, "Again, yeah, yeah, yeah." That's uh. Oops. And I was like, oh, I, I'm sorry. I must be mistaken. And he gave me this look like he was going to kill me while I was <laughs> in the middle of the night. Well, if yeah, I'm still here. I, oh, I've and, lived to tell the tale. And so. think about that. He had such righteous anger right then yeah. for outing his infidelity. And yeah. yet... I had no idea. I was welcome. That was my job. Right. My job is to be nice to him and welcome him back. Like, and how dare you be nice? How dare See what you get for being I nice? do my job. How much better would it have been if... The wife had known about that and approved about approved of it, and so when you welcomed him back, she was like, "Oh yes, you've been here before. I mm-hmm. forgot. Now I get to be here too." Or just been like, "Oh yeah, that's when he came with so and so. Did you get to meet her? Whatever." And I could have been like, "Yeah, whatever. This and that." And she had really cool stilettos. <laughs> <laughs> but the the thing is, is like. Isn't that better? Wouldn't that have been so much better than him getting possibly a divorce? uh, Probably a divorce. (laughs) Probably a divorce, or at least a seriously weird talk. I don't think they had the night they thought they were going to have coming into the hotel Uh, after that. Thank you, Jay. Thank you. It's not my fault right. they're living false. No, no, no. It is your fault because you pointed out that they were cheating. It is my job to recognize repeat guests. Mm Mm-hmm. Honestly, if you wanted to be secretive about it, you go to a place where they don't care, not a place where that they not greet you. Not a place you. that he comes several times a month. Oh, oh damn. Oh. oh, damn. Ouch. Yeah. <laughs> well, then. <laughs> so, but, so, but again, this it, is okay. Yeah. <laughs> it, and he felt justified in his anger toward her. Yes, he did. He, oh, yeah. And why? 
he's the one lying. He's the one carrying on. And it's just, it's a ridiculous thing. I worked in a kitchen of a restaurant during my wild and wooly days. Woo-woo. Whoa. And they had a kind of a game. Mm-hmm. And it was, the the wait staff had kind of a game. And the thing was, they enjoyed outing men that were cheating and covering for women who were cheating. Oh, wow. It was a game you scored both ways it was you know if you got to cover for this woman you you got i don't know points it wasn't a specific thing they were just like hey covered for that girl on table five they would do that and they would be like hey just destroyed that guy's marriage on table three. Oh, yeah that was mm. but that's considered for some reason okay no that's normalized yeah that's normalized that's not mm-hmm. it's one of those things I don't get it. Just be a decent human being. Yeah, but why that's unacceptable. Why can't we? Why can't we all just be getting along? Why can't we all just be on the same team? Why can't we be friends? Why can't we be friends? <laughs> oh, you hear that, Jay? He wants to be friends. Uh, no. No. He just said that. He just friends on you. Uh, no. no. We're way past that. There's no escaping. <laughs> you heard that one. Hot <laughs> <laughs> girl, you heard that one. You have breathed the air. The well, you've been here 22 years. You should know. Oh, I know. <laughs> uh, there is no escape. It's like Hotel California. Mm. Oh, thanks. You can check out anytime you want, but you can never leave. He said it, not me. Wow. Good to know how you really feel. Love you. Maybe I should try to find partners that don't view me as a hotel. Um, Do you have a cricket sound you can put in? <laughs> <laughs> so awkward silence. <laughs> <laughs> You know, just saying. If there's uh, anybody out there that would not view me as Hotel California, that would be damn just fan freaking tastic. Just saying. All the flavors we could have picked, and we've gone with salty. <laughs> it was your doing. I you started do it. You started. I started singing the song, thinking everybody should get along and everybody should communicate. And like yeah, what you did, like you around a riot. the world, you and Zan a riot. had to take it to like. You're right. Yeah. See what he did? See what he did there? He took a good thing. Oh, don't take the blame off of yourself. I am taking you the blame off of myself. You sing us into Hotel California, don't. Oh, look, lamp. <laughs> <laughs> That's my Aww. lamp. That's <laughs> not is admiring more. the lamp now. Well, that I, might actually, after I thought the, you guys liked to share. After this podcast, it might be the only thing you have. <laughs> <laughs> the lamp is quite curvy. Yeah, it is. It has some very nice curves. <laughs> anyway. It's a bit twisted. Um, just like I like them. <laughs> so the the thing about it, one thing that I wanted to address while we were talking about this is that we even get weird looks no matter where we go. The three of us oh, can yeah. go. We'll go into a Home Depot and Jay will be holding each of our hands, like not all four of them. I, she'll be holding one hand from each of us. <laughs> <laughs> That'd, be weird. That'd be weird. It'd be kind of hard weird to walk. Even for us. It yeah. would be. Mm-hmm. But you you can see the looks people give us and in a situation where you can just be out in the crowd so to speak there's a certain level of anonymity to that where you are untouchable because it doesn't matter what the fellow shopper thinks it only becomes an issue when somebody across the counter is being difficult because they have the power to refuse you Mm -hmm. and this is something that is common in the lgbtq community oh yeah where People without any kind of law behind them or any kind of really high ground to stand on will refuse service or they will withhold benefits or withhold suggestions, withhold professionalism or what have you just because they can. Just because they decided at some point, I don't like what I'm seeing here, so I refuse and people will defend that right. They'll be, oh, well, they should be able to re- refuse service to anyone for any reason. No. No. No, they no, shouldn't. You, you, okay, I can, I can understand refusing service to anyone, but I don't understand refusing service to people who are not jackasses. Well, right. That's, that's the thing. Refusing service is supposed to be your sacred right. So if somebody is making a fuss, if somebody right. is being disruptive, if somebody's being uh, unsociable, Yes, you can tell them. You know what? You're hop you're done your, here. Right. Hop get, in your douche canoe. I mean, and we've all dealt the with away. the general public. Right. Just some people are unsatiable. You can't do anything, say anything, mm-hmm. to actually make them happy. Oh yeah. So no matter what you do. So just make them go away. And it coming from retail, I can tell you, there's a certain satisfaction when somebody says, uh, "Well, I'll just take my business elsewhere," and please? you literally can sell them. Yes, please do. Please, I have please actually. Do. 
when I worked in fast food. I have told them. Go be somebody <laughs> Go to else's Burger King. problem. <laughs> Yeah, she we're, has. We're I in have. competition with these people. I want you to go there because the amount of trouble you caused us, just do that same thing just over there with them. Uh, but the thing is, 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 somebody will refuse a wedding cake. It's not about the wedding cake. It's about what happens after. Well, yeah, it's they about cause... all of the things that it's about the uh, the couple that had to move, the couple that lost everything. And I'm not talking about the proprietors. I'm talking about the people who asked for the cake got death threats to the point where they needed to move. Right. Because all of these douche canoes came out of the woodwork and started in on them. Yeah. Oh. And I want to say I want to say that this is in the U.S. OK, we are out of the U.S. and we have listeners all over the world. And I've kind of been watching numbers. It's been amazing. And we love, we've been getting a lot of European listeners and it's awesome. Thank you. Hooray. We love you. And, and hey, good on you. Those folks in Australia, we love you too. Yep. Australia, Europe, Canada. We love you guys in Canada too. Um, but All over the world. All over the world. Here's the deal. We hope that other countries don't have the similar problem and we do hope that sometime in the u.s i'm not sure when there's more acceptance more acceptance for the lgbtq community more acceptance for poly just people being people it, it, it's just a, a pain to deal with to see it every day and we're not just talking about you know the poly community even though that that is what our podcast is about and that's what we'll focus on sure no but within our little even our triad now before that it was a quad and two women were bisexual right. and one of the men were bisexual so we have quite of an extensive experience with that our children date people who are you know same gender or transgender or yeah. we, non-gender we, we have demisexual we have pansexual we have straight we have bi our friends oh, our family God, members yeah, we, have are... a, we have a whole rainbow of friends well, and we one, love it one time well i went out with some of my girl friends amidst all of us there were bisexuals and lesbians there were very small displays of affection but you could tell you know some of them had more of a masculine look. This was in a very small town, and we went out to eat crawfish. And it was nearly an hour before anybody actually came to our table. And we had to go and flag somebody down. And when we finally did, they hadn't realized that nobody came to our table, but the person who was supposed to was severely homophobic. Mm. And refused to serve us. Wow. So we all walked out. To me, that's amazing that people want to harp on their freedom of uh, their, their freedoms to do as they want and do business the way they want. But if I'm the Chamber of Commerce and you're coming to me and you say, I want to start a, uh, a sandwich business over here. Conveniently, they always seem to leave out the people that they, they, they forget to mention the people they're planning on not serving. Because if I'm the Chamber of Commerce and you tell me, hey... I want to start a business in your location, but I'm not going to serve any gay people whatsoever or any of those poly weirdos or any of those pagan weirdos. And as a chamber of commerce, I look at my demographics and I say, that's actually kind of a significant portion of the populace in mm -hmm. this area. You know, I mean, it's not huge, but it's not insignificant. Well, and no, if you're no. not going to sell, if you're not going to sell to these people, I would rather give your business license to someone else on that extremely valuable corner that you're well, at. Well, it's not only that, but I mean, you're going to make a bad reputation for the town by doing that, mm -hmm. but yeah. for the community in general, it's like, why would I want to go to a community that is allowed to to discriminate mm -hmm. against a certain group of people? I mean, I thought we were moving past that. And it actually just happened in one state. This interracial couple got turned away from renting a uh, hall for their wedding because they were interracial. Like, how the fuck how is does that happen? happen? How we are in 2019. How is this still okay? Like, and it's it, never they, been okay. They said it was because it was against their Bible, their Christian Bible rules. The, the, you know, and it's just, it's really hard to say how is that even in this day and age. Mm -hmm possible right that somebody is so fucking closed-minded that that happens well it is because as much as people are pushing back and as much as people are realizing that they can be out mm -hmm. it's now causing the people to be confronted where they didn't have to be before yeah. and so now they're having to people who 
you know, are in whatever minority community or, you know, what's becoming way less of a minority community, they are coming 